A Verbush, you could train a sole supervised model on your own data and custom setup without any hassle and zero stress. Well, good news! Lightly Train, an open source library from Lightly, makes it possible with just one line of code. And in this video, I'll walk you through a step by step tutorial on pre training using Lightly for an object detection task. So, without further ado, let's dive in. So the data set I've decided to use for this tutorial is called PMID 2019 for object detection using YOLO 11 and it is made of microscopic images containing 24 different phytoplanktons and it has applications in intelligent marine agriculture. And to download it you can just use the second link because I believe the first one is outdated and you can download from the Google Drive instead. And once you download it you will see this PMID 2019 folder and once you open it you'll see three different subfolders the annotations one is made of a list of XML files and inside file name says about the name of the image file size says about the resolution and finally object says about the object like the name of the class it belongs to and also the information about the bounded mock surrounding the object and the next folder is called image sets that is specified what images belong to train validation and test set like if i open test.txt you can see all the list of images that belong to the test set and the last one is called jpeg images that contains all the images that we have in the data set like if i open one you can see this or another one it could be something like this but uh, note that this dataset that we currently have is in some general format and we want to train yolo 11 and yolo 11 expects it to be in the yolo format so we create a script and let's call it to yoloformat.py and inside this what I will do is just to copy a code I've already written and will put the code in the description of this video. But essentially this code relies on dataset there, the path where this data is located and also output there where it is going to be stored and also class mapper which contains all the classes and inside there is a for loop that iterates all the data and transform it into the YOLO format that we expect but more importantly we have this line of code that train images that we want to use is actually 30% of the actual data. And we can imagine this scenario that among all of the data that we have, only 30% of them are labeled. And we want to see how self-supervised learning with Lightly can help us to leverage all the data that we have instead of only using this 30% of the labeled ones. And having this scenario, let's run this script just to see what happens. You can see that the YOLO annotations directory is created and at the end of the script it says that we have 2700 of them for the pre-training images and 870 of them which is 30% is used for training with annotations and we use lightly just to leverage all these 2700 of the images just to train without any labels and we also have validation and test which is fine. And the next thing we have to do is just to create a YAM file that's a configuration file that just tells the YOLO where the data is located, how many classes we have, and what are the class names. So we create a new file for it. Let's call it pmid2019.yaml. And in this YAM file, first we say where the training is located, which we can say by going into the YOLO annotations and then train, and then we can copy the path to the images and paste it here and what about the validation well thanks to the copilot we just use tab to fill it and we'll do the same for the test and note that we only do it for the images and what about the labels well the yolo knows that where we put the images next to it it should be labels and it handles all by itself and we don't need to worry about it Next thing we fill is the number of classes or NC, which we put it to be 24 because we have 24 classes. And finally names, which is the name of the classes we have. But note that it has to be with the same order that I put in the pre-processing code. And since it is a hassle just to put it one by one, I just copy whatever I had from before and put it all here. And now that we have everything all set, let's try to train YOLO 11 from scratch to serve as a baseline as opposed to use lightly to pre-train it first. And to make that happen, you have to install Ultralytex using pip install Ultralytex. But I have already done it, so it is fine on my side. And next I create a new Python file, let's call it train yolo.py and say from Ultralytex import yolo. And then if name equals main, then we would say our model that is yolo equals yolo and then we specify the version 
and we use YOLO 11 and then the nano variant but note that we don't specify the .pt because that's the pre-trained PyTorch file and since I want to train it from scratch I will use .yaml instead that is the configuration file of the model and the next thing I'm gonna do is just yolo.train and as the data argument we provide pmid2019.yaml the yaml file we just created and for the epochs let's just say we do it for 20 and the next thing is the name of the training run which we call it uh, yolo11n-scratch and uh, finally the project directory which we run will be something like run slash train so that should be fine and let's just see how it works when we train YOLO 11 from scratch so the training seems finished now we can just go and uh, open the runs directory and you can see there are a bunch of files created and uh, one useful thing I can show you is this train batch that shows you how the training data with ground truth annotations looks like and you can see that we have these bounding boxes and like all these four bounding boxes belong to the class ID21 and you can just see the rest yourself and uh, the other thing that's quite useful and is what we need to verify in this tutorial is how the model predicts given this limited data that it has seen throughout the training and for that you can open valbatch labels to see the actual labels first it has a lot of variety for sure and then when we open the actual predictions you'll see that most of the cases the model misses to predict and there are only three cases among these many samples that model can actually detect samples and let's see another one second one seems better and the last one also has the issues like before so obviously training from scratch has lots of limitations and here comes the lightly that we can leverage so that instead of training by initializing from random ways we use self-supervised training to learn rich semantics from the image without utilizing any labels and then fine-tuning by the YOLO and to do that I will create a Python file for pre-training and uh, I call it pre-train yolo.py and then I install the library by typing pip install lightly train and I already have one so it is fine on my side and to see how this pre-training looks like we can take a look at the documentation they provided and inside this documentation we can go to the train part and we can see that it's only a single line of command that we first import lightly train and then in the train function we can say what's the output directory where the model and all the logs has to be stored and where the data is located only the images not the label since it is self-supervised and then what's the custom model that we want to use which can be either a string or an instance to the custom model that you have created and uh, what's the method and for the method they cover right now they have dyno and uh, distillation which we distill knowledge from a teacher which is vit base pre-trained from dyno version 2 and this teacher teaches the student model that we pass to enhances the final representation embedding it has using the knowledge distillation loss and for the contrastive one they have the sim clr and coming back to the training part we can also have in addition to the method we can have the epochs and also the batch size so I just copy this one and go back and use this as the initialization point and about the name of the output let's just call it uh, dyno and about the data of where it is located I'll go and say it should be uh, not this one the yellow annotations and then train oh not this one this limited one so instead pre-train one and then the images and copy the relative pass or maybe the copy pass just to be safer and then put it here and for the model I want to use the YOLO not the torch vision so we delete it and say ultra latex slash YOLO 11 the nano version and the dot yaml to read it from the config file but about the method 
I want to use dyno, so I just mentioned dyno, and let's just use the batch size to be 64. But in addition, I also want to change the optimization parameters just to show you how it looks like. So opening the documentation once again, if I click on the purple link in the tip section, we can see that the lightly train has a variety of arguments that it accepts, but I'm looking for optimization. So I scroll down until, uh, yeah, this optimization by default is set to be auto, which automatically picks one. But for the sake of this tutorial, I want to use Adam W. So I go back to the code and type it to be Adam W. Next, I want to adjust the default learning rate. So I open the documentation once again, and we can see that Optimarks for Adam W can be these ones. So I just copy it. And uh, the only thing I actually want to change is the learning rate. So I delete the rest and I set the learning rate to be 0 0.0005. That is actually the default learning rate that Dino paper has used. And uh, I guess it should be fine. So let's just now see how it works. If I say Python tree pretrain yellow.py. So now that we can see it has a teacher embedding model and a student embedding model, both of them are having the same architecture and teacher is updated using exponential moving average of the student and also has some projection head and so on. And the total number of trainable parameters is 16.3 millions and some other information as well. It should take a while, so I'll see you after it's finished. So now the pre-training is finished. The nice thing about it is that it automatically detected that the model that we are passing get is yellow, and it gives us some guidance as how we can use the pre-trained weights to load the yellow and fine tune the model. So I can just copy this and use it. But before that, I want to show you in the out directory that you can see there that there are two things that are quite informative. First one is train a log that contains the training logs in addition to the hyperparameters used in the pre-training. Like uh, remember I was saying learning rate to be a value like 0 0.0005. You can just see it here and you can see that uh, the optimizer I used is Adam W and other information as well. And the other thing is the metric one that you can see the training loss started from seven and throughout training it decreased and at the end it has some value like uh, it is four. It is higher than penultimate one, but it is natural to fluctuate in self supervised setting as long as it is goes down on the whole, so it should be fine. That's all about the metrics. And now let's just see how we can fine tune the YOLO using the pre-trained weights and what are the improvements. So in the training the YOLO, we just need to paste the one recommended in the terminal. Let's call it YOLO as well. And also comment the, the first one. And the other thing is just renaming this scratch to be fine tune. And now let's just see what happens when we once we run the code. Fine tuning is finished and let's see how it behaves now compared to the training from scratch. I open the runs and in the fine tune you can see the validation. Uh, here are the predictions. While uh, when we trying to do it from scratch it used to be something like this thing on the side. The difference is that now it can detect some additional samples like uh, this one and this one and this one. While well, it couldn't detect it from scratch, but it has a true prediction or not, we can check it by opening the labels on the side. And uh, you can see that uh, these two are correct. This one is correctly detected but has wrong label. And yeah, it is quite better compared to what it used to be, especially for this one, which is quite tiny and it wasn't detected in the case from scratch, while now it does and it also has great label, quite impressive. It would have been much better if I had more annotated data for sure. And you can try and see on other scenarios as well. Like looking at the second batch of validation, you can see that it detects lots of them, while without that, with only training from scratch, if I try to visualize it, I can see on the side that uh, on challenging cases, like for the first one, the scratch case cannot detect any sample, like you see it's empty, while the one from the Petrian weights can detect that challenging sample. And that wraps up our tutorial. Now it's your turn to give Lightly a try and see how it boosts your own project. I hope you found it useful, and until the next video, goodbye.